Okay. Hi, everyone. Is this loud? Okay. Uh, so my name is Konstantin. I'm a web application architect. Uh, I co-founded Remote Connect Tools, which is not a screwdriver shop, but we do um, organization products for people in many non-IT industries that can ease their day-to-day -day job. In the past, I... <coughs> In the past, I've uh, created web platforms for the broadcasting industry, working with BBC, International Community Com Committee, ESPN, and other big brands. I've also created web platforms for the financial trading industry, uh, dealing with high-velocity data-driven systems. I've also experienced the more creative sides of development with um, top European brands, like Lidl, Heidi, and, and those guys. Okay, so I'll just go off the bat and say, what is JSON MVC? I'm not gonna move through a lot of slides just to define the, the JSON MVC concept. We'll just go right at it. It's a JavaScript framework for building web application. Basically, whatever you can do with Meteor, Angular, Ember, you can do with JSON MVC. And that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, questions? <laughs> but there is a very, very, very tiny, almost insignificant uh, difference between all those frameworks and JSON MVC. It's so tiny that I managed to fit the entire difference between those frameworks and the one that I built in one slide. It's API. It has only three keywords, but these three keywords allow you to do the exact same applications as you would do with the hundreds of methods and conventions and restrictions that all these frameworks put you through. Also, these are three non-programmatic keywords. So that, that means it doesn't affect the way you code, doesn't affect the flavor of JavaScript you use. Okay, so this is the moment when uh, we have to stop and say, what is going on? What, is, what can occur that can make the transition from wikis on end and months and months of digging through um, documentation versus one single slide of, one single slide of keywords? Well, in engineering, this seems to be a recurrent pattern. In many industries, it has occurred through different technological advances. And the most famous industry where this happened with drastic consequences is the auto industry. So this is the Model A. This was done in the uh, 1920s by Ford. And this is the first model to be produced on a framework, on a precision framework. And it's very complex, building a car needs a lot of engineers, a lot of technical people to create a lot of complex complexity. But the most important part of a car is the engine. So in the 1800s, we found and we invented the internal combustion engine. It's a very complex piece of engineering. It has over 1,000 moving parts and each part has a maximum of one millimeter um, off. If it's more than that, the engine can literally explode. 100 years later, something changed. Something made this huge composition of functions and keywords and a lot of processes redundant. In an electric engine, there are only 20 moving parts. The, it is so simple that you can do it yourself at home, for example. You don't need so many engineers. You don't need that technical qualifications to do that. It's way simpler. And by doing this, we get a lot of additional benefits. For example, the electric uh, engine cars are the safest to drive around, have the safest uh, rating, and also, 
uh, uh, provide a different way of uh, caring for the planet. So what changed? What was the driving factor uh, to make the transition between 1,000 moving parts to only 20? And it wasn't an innovation, innovation in the technical, the engineering part. It was an innovation in fuel. So gas, the problem of gas, it's, it's a substance. And in order to extract the power from gas, you need to explode it. You need an explosion chamber, combustion chamber. And when that happens, you need a lot of systems of pulleys that uh, drive the, the train and action the wheels. And all that complexity was eliminated the moment we changed the fuel with electric current. In our applications, in our frameworks, we have the same situation at the moment. We use a fuel that is not very efficient. Our frameworks have an internal combustion chamber where this fuel has to detonate. So what we use today and what we are used to use today is actions, events. All applications register events. Controllers need to take actions and map to methods and execute and then call other methods and trigger more events. And in the end, an application becomes just like the internal combustion engine with thousands of parts moving. But there's, the new, there's a new fuel that we can use. It's called data. And data is much more robust and can simplify the way we build applications. So through this talk, I would like to challenge the status quo. And I think it's time to reconsider the fuel we put in our applications. And it's time to redesign our engines. <coughs> The solution I'm proposing, the new type of engine I'm proposing, it's called JSON, an MVC. I don't know how many of you know of a small particular system of managing data, which is actually the most robust, versatile, and efficient data management system ever produced in the computer world. It's called the JSON ecosystem. And it consists from in four parts. The first one is a pointer. It allows remote access to data. You don't need a reference to the variable or to the local storage to access data. You need a pointer to it. A patch. Patches are ways through which modifications and changes occur over time in a way that you don't need to access an object. You don't need a reducer to uh, take a state, change it, and give another state. Through patches, you can create changes that never touch the data. Schema. A JSON schema is a way that takes validation to a different level. It gives you 100% integrity on our data scheme. Uh, in, in the current context of uh, web applications today, uh, a single state system is usually preferred. But how do you make sure that single state uh, keeps its integrity? How can you make sure that through reducers or functions or accessing the data, you do not mutate it in a way that is incompatible with the broad application? And of course, the JSON data, which is what every application on this planet uses to store its internal state. It gives the structure of the application. So with this new data system, we need to relook at our engine. And we need to see how those 1,000 moving parts can be transformed into 20 simple moving parts. So a new postulate for MVC. MVC has been, from the 70s, the default a paradigm of creating user interfaces is simple to comprehend, but is very hard to explain because it creates a lot of confusion. In the traditional system and what frameworks use, MVC is entangled. You get controllers speak to models, models speak to view, 
and it creates a whole hierarchy of things going on at the same time. In the new model, you don't need that. By having remote access to data, by being able to react to changes, you do not need to link models and views together. You can let data do that for you. So in the new paradigm, a model is nothing more than a function that transforms data from a state A to a state B. It doesn't know anything about the application. All it knows is the data that it takes and the data that it gives out. The view, the same thing. It never does computation. It only renders what the data store already uh, has. And controllers. Controllers are the way changes are made to the uh, data store. They create patches, and through these patches, everything can change. So let's look how this looks in practice. Theory without practice doesn't make sense. So I chose an Ajax login example that I think illustrates a lot of the benefits and a lot of uh, the, the different ways that JSON and VC can bring to the table. So it all starts with a UI controller. You have a button and you have a form. And when the user presses the button, you get a submission and you need to trigger an Ajax call. But instead of doing the whole Ajax call and all the management that you usually do, you just take that uh, event, you transform it into a patch, and you apply it to the state. What happens next? You have a model that listens to uh, login data and the submit button, and when those happen, it creates a transformation that gets errors and the data that is properly formatted that can be used later. What it does then, it takes that result and puts it in the same data store. There's also errors view. So whenever that model will put errors in the validation uh, location, the view will just render all those errors. Nothing more. But there's also a login controller. This listens to the login validation. And when that happens, when it gives a valid uh, value from that path, it creates a new patch, triggering that an Ajax request should be made. And it gives the data, it gives the URL, it gives all the details and stores them in the database. What happens next is the Ajax controller kicks in. When it sees a new Ajax request is pending, it gets triggered and it makes the call. The first thing that it does, it then saves that uh, timestamp onto the database so that the entire system can know that an Ajax call is taking place at that moment, but at the same time is keeping track of what is happening with the Ajax call. After a certain period of time, a response comes, it takes that response, it forms another patch, and it puts it to the data store. But that doesn't stop the flow. You get a session model that transforms the state that we currently have on the data store and verifies if the session is valid or not. So it takes the response, and if it's valid, the response changed in a valid way, then it also does uh, valid true and sets the expiry time according, accordingly to the response time and a set of parameters of when an ex uh, a session must expire. And it sets that again on the state. And the end of the example happens in the dashboard view. When the component that needs to render the view, the dashboard view, will listen to the session is valid. And if the session is valid, then it will show the user the welcome screen. So just two actions happened. The first 
when the user clicked the button and later when the AJAX call finished and the response was uh, placed on the database. But everything else, everything, the way all the components uh, played together and managed uh, the, their process was done through data changes. What we have is dedicated components. We no longer have a controller that needs to remember the state of transitioning between the uh, UI call and the end result of an AJAX. You have individual components that re are responsible for a single thing. Just like in the Unix philosophy, do one thing and do it well. Through all this process, you have a global visibility. In the old system of using controllers, if you would want to add a loading screen that starts at the very beginning and ends when the response came, uh, you'll have a very difficult time to actually implement that. You'll have many events going through the system and you have to synchronize the way the login screen fades out, the loading screen fades out and the dashboard is shown. But in this way, every component knows about the, what's happening and it can react accordingly. There's a high traceability. By having decoupled at such a granular level, you know who changed what, how it changed, and why it changed. You know what triggered that controller or that model or that view to change. And you get stability. Every possible error is contained in the lifespan of that model or that controller or that view. If you extrapolate that system that we just gave with a small AJAX and you grow it to an application that has hundreds of functionality, you will keep all those attributes, you will keep the stability, the traceability, you will keep the decoupling and the re reusability of those components that you build. So I'm going to show so some case studies, some very simple case studies. I've been working on JSON MVC for over a year now and I've seen it work in many different scenarios. I've tested it, tested it for performance. In the binary option trading platform, I had to implement a system that could have a very high throughput. There are many markets open that get data at every single second. There are tens and hundreds of actions happening every second and the interface must remain responsive. But through this system, you can easily get a 40 to 60 frames per second stable because every computation is decoupled. The UI change is just a render. There's nothing happening there and it's in a totally different thread than the other computation. The second case study is productivity. And this is a refactor I did for an accounting system which was built using React and Backbone and it had tens of thousands of lines of code. So a com it had a goal process that reloaded the, the page and it took about 10 to 15 seconds just to parse the whole code base and uh, show you what you changed. So that was un unacceptable. So by changing it with JSON MVC, by reusing all the small components and getting at a very granular level, we achieved an over 80% lines of code reduction. So just 20% of that application matches 100% of the functionality of the application done in React and Backbone. Also, uh, I've implemented using Webpack's hot module reload. And once you save a file, regardless of where it is, if it's a data store or a controller or a model, it takes less than one second for the browser to update just that tiny part while your application is still running. That means you'll never have to live reload your application. It's only small components being swapped at runtime. And the third case study is about stability. So in May, uh, RCT Remote Connect Tools created a tool for a Romanian video production company that had daily TV shows. And it had tens of people to manage, to organize, 
and to see that the materials are uploaded, ingested, um, are transformed, encoded, and reach the broadcasting end. So through a system that we build, with an application that we build, we managed to solve all these organizational issues and put in the hand of every team member, operator, uh, a mobile app that they could use to organize. The thing is, and this is the weirdest possible experience I've ever had in my 10 years experience as a developer. Um, since May until now, there hasn't been one bug filed. And I don't know about you, but this is spooky. And I, I always go back a, a few weeks and is everything okay? Did you encounter any problems? And no. And my theory with this is because all those components are very streamlined and very predictable and data is the only thing that changes. And when you create the functionality, the function, you know how that data will change and you know how that computation will behave. That means once you get the application running, it never fails. Also, there is never built up of state. Traditional applications have the major problem of keeping state spread. And this is famous in object-oriented programming where you get a lot of components keeping internal state. And after five, 10, 20 hours, the, the system becomes incompatible. You, you don't no longer have control on all the small islands of uh, um, state. So let's recap. JSON MVC is a JavaScript framework that simplifies application, your application and revamps development. It's not an improvement on the current model. It doesn't bring features newer than Redux or Flux or the new uh, systems that come around. It completely changes the way we build applications. It uses a JSON, which is the most versatile and robust data management system to write, access, and validate data in a, single, in a single system. And it proposes a new MVC postulate that increases reusability and stability. So the benefits I've seen in the past year of using this technology, it's, it's fun. The way you use it is change state, change data, change controls and models, until you get to the right product. Back in the days when I had to use frameworks or different methodologies of writing software, uh, if the client came after months of development and said, okay, no, 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 we need this functionality uh, off the table and put a new one, that took another two months of refactoring and changing the application around. In this new application, I sat with the client at every step and we could reimagine and refactor the application each day. Uh, at Remote Connect Tools, we're, we're currently in the development of other organizational uh, tools for other industries, and we see the same effect. We get a, a tool, and we move controllers and models around, we switch them, and we get a total new application in a matter of hours. There are more features with fewer bugs you're not writing so much code. You're not imposed with an API that you must follow and you can make mistakes. It's way simpler than that. And it's performant by design. The way the uh, models work and the data access works, it's everything is cached. When something hits the data store, that thing is cached. When so a model computes a new state, that thing is cached. So the more the application runs, it actually becomes much more performant. And it has the most concise API I've ever seen in a web framework. Also, if you favor object-oriented or if you fa favor functional programming, you name it, you can use whatever style, whatever type of technology you would like to use. It doesn't make restrictions on what kind of libraries you can use. The only thing that it does, it gives you a, a template on how to manage 
the most important part of your application, which is data. So the way you get started with this, you just npm install JSON MVC in your project, and then visit jsonmvc.io for some tutorials that are currently underway <laughs> of creating. So the next milestone is reaching an alpha. And because this, this framework is now the backbone of our newly founded company, it will advance very quickly to a production version. And I expect in the next few months to be able to reach um, a compatibility table across all browsers and can give you something that you can use to your net project in your team, in your company. We founded um, with Ciprian Borodescu um, a community, an open collective, in order to incentivize de other developers to come and join and help us build this amazing product to life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Constantin. That was cool. Um, lots of questions, but they're all in Romanian. Cool. No, I'm joking. They're all, they're all in impeccable. Yeah, English. I know Romanian. It's okay. You know it. Excellent. Can a beginner grasp JSON MVC? Um, the experience I had so far is usually the experts are the ones that have the problem the most with it. Um, I've tried showing this to people that didn't know JavaScript and they managed to get an application going in a matter of days. So it's also a tool perfect for learning on how to program. Excellent. Um, you mentioned that the next milestone is an alpha, so perhaps this question uh, it answers itself. But how many companies use JSON MVC in production? Uh, currently in production uh, is not uh, yet in production. I mean, uh, we have the tools in production for a few companies, but it's not at the uh, mainstream, it's not widespread. Uh, this month, we'll be rolling out a new product, which will be um, available for everyone to use. So, so I'm very confident that we'll use, we'll get to that stage very fast. Excellent, and now we have some in-depth questions. Cool. So uh, prepare to uh, answer difficult questions. Uh, I saw in your talk directives in the HTML examples. Can you talk a bit about them? Yeah, so currently what I've implemented, what I use is Vue.js for the rendering part, but I only use the part for HTML um, manipulation. Uh, the thing is, what I did is an adapter over Vue.js, but that adapter can be made for React and for any kind of uh, view system. So in the future, uh, this is one of the things that I, I want to focus later this year, is to eliminate that adapter and create a very simple JSON MVC specific interface. But you can use it in your React projects and output React, you can use it in your view projects and creating view uh, templates. That was another question. Do people need to know Angular, React, uh, et cetera, to use JSON MVC? No, that, that's the thing. The, the concept is so new, the methodology is so simple that you don't need to know anything about the uh, broad corpus of knowledge in the industry to start creating applications. Question about performance. How does JSON MVC manage 60 frames per second when so much data transformation is going on? Well, the thing is, uh, the, the JavaScript compiler in the system is actually incredibly optimized for transforming simple data. When you just transform numbers to other numbers or letters to other letters, everything happens instantly. The JSON patch, for example, it's very fast. Uh, there are some implementations uh, which, which I currently use, I have over a million patches per second that they, they can do. And the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, having your application split in so little components makes the compiler easily optimize what happens inside. So you get a much more efficient system. Also, because you don't rely on 
prototyping or reference or other things outside your function, the system can work as efficient and be optimizable by the compiler. And how are view changes applied and rendered to the DOM? How does that happen? How do view changes? Yeah. Well, um, you just give the view the arguments which are the paths, the JSON paths that you're listening from the data store, and you put the result inside the view, inside the HTML template. And using Vue.js or React or another system underneath the engine, it just renders that part that changed, that element that changed. And this, the final question to put you really on the spot, this isn't from me, so don't hit me. You're describing one-way data flow, which is the basis of React and Redux. What's the killer feature of JSON MVC? Uh, that this actually does uh, one-way data binding without the binding part. So Redux and all those parts, all those systems, use actions that you need to uh, explode at one part of the system and then you need to catch in one function, and that function needs to take that action, see where it needs to change in the data store, make that change, and then uh, replace the current state. So through patches, you eliminate all that process. So a patch is actually an action combined with a reducer, but in a declarative way, not an imperative way that Redux uh, has. Thank you. Are there any questions from the floor? If you want to put your hand up and indicate that you have a question for Constantin. Oh, that, that was very clear then. <laughs> it was very clear, actually. Yeah? Even, even I understood it. Ladies and gentlemen of Bucharest, give it up for Sector 7's Golden Boy.